going on, Israel? Most High Christ Bliss. Also, you here, IUIC Gastonia. We here in Greensboro, North Carolina, catching down these lies. A fourth of you lie. Brothers talk well in the spirit. They will receive. All praise to the Most High. Shalom, Israel. Shalom. Shalom. Mr. Martin, what do you know about the Bible? A little bit. I know Genesis and the Gospel. Okay. You familiar with Moses? A little bit. So Moses did what? What was his prominent uh, campaign, what he did? He got the Ten Commandments down from God and brought them down. Right. But after delivering the children of Israel from slavery, he received the commandments, right? right? Let's read about what Moses said. One of the things he said to the children of Israel. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side of Jordan and the wilderness. So what we're reading, the book of Deuteronomy itself, the fifth book of the Bible, is the words Moses spake to the children of Israel. Let's go to the 28th chapter. Let's read about what was given to the children of Israel via Moses. At the mouth of the Lord. Read. The book of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, and thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the children of Israel were promised to be above and are set on high above all nations of the earth, right? That is a particular group of people being set according to God above everyone else, right? If we were to do what? Read the top part again. And it shall come to pass, and thou shalt hearken diligently unto the... If thou shalt hearken dil diligently to the commandments, right? Now let's print verse 15. What would happen if we were to break the commandments, Mark? Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's a sin against God. Just right, to break the commandments, that's a sin, right? But if we were promised to be blessed above all nations, set on high above all nations, if we kept them, what would happen if we broke them? What do you think? God's will. I don't know what would happen after we broke them. I know that uh, says that if you break a sin, you are forgiven for some of your sins. Okay, in the New Testament, in the New Testament, right? But if you repent, that's the Old Testament here, what we're reading, right? So as a people, what was it written? Let me ask them, right? What, what's the... Charity. Sister Charity, what was the question? I didn't have a question? You didn't have a question. Let me ask you then. Let me ask y'all as well. What happened to the children of Israel according to God's prophecies for breaking the commandments as it is written here in Deuteronomy 28? What happened to the children of Israel after that point? What about you? What do you say? Did you hear the question? Okay. The question is, what happened to the 12 tribes of Israel because they broke God's commandments as it is written here in Deuteronomy 28? What happened to them? You don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, now, Brother Mark said that breaking the commandments is sin. That's true. Let's find out what happened when they sinned. Read verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. We were cursed, and those curses came upon us and overtook us. This brother right here. What's going on, brother? You got a cross around your neck. You believe in the Bible, therefore, right? Come deal with me, come deal with me, right? It says that we'd be cursed as a people. What are the cur what are the curses though? What are the curses? They don't know? They don't they don't matter? What are, what are, let's read some of the curses. How about that, Mark? So it said that we would be cursed as a people if we broke the commandments. Let's read some of the curses. How about verse 16? Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So, brother Mark. You've been around a while, yeah? You've seen different cities, different different states, different locations, right? right? But all of those places, when we deal with our people, when you see our people and where they're at in those cities, are they in the greatest parts of those areas? Are they in the biggest mansions? Are they in the cleanest streets? No. Where are they at? No, in the ghettos. In the ghettos, right? What they call them, yeah. In the, in the slums, in the ghettos, in the barrios, right? Right. With the shanty roofs, perhaps, galvanized. Read that again? 
Verse 16, cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall we be in the city, and cursed shall we be in the field. Is this a field? Let me see if it's a field on here. Is that a field? Where they at? They being sent to field, yep. Is that a field, Brother Mark? Yeah. That's a field, right? What did the Bible say we would be cursed? Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So in the fields, where would we be? What, how, how would you describe that cursing that we were in, that affliction? What was the condition that we were in when we were in fields cursed? Slavery, Slavery right? To pick cotton, to pick tobacco, to pick sugar cane, right? Indigo, and so forth. For hundreds of years, were we not? Now, the Bible says that we would be cursed in that fashion, didn't it? She said what? Sister Keisha? She know a little bit, she don't know a lot about the Bible. That's most of us, yeah. right? Most of us yeah. coming out of the churches, we've been going to church all our life for however many years, right? So we're in these churches, we don't get told about things like this. Read verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So coming back to this poster, right? Sister Keisha, Sister Keisha, Brother Mark, coming back to this poster, read that again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So you have sons and daughters, right? In history, right? Our sons and daughters, now this is before this happened. This is Deuteronomy. Moses is still alive at this time when this is written. But it said in the future, because we broke God's commandments as a people, which we still do to this day, such as even now, we'll be cursed and so forth. The curse is actually being described here, one of which is what? Read that again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. At what point in history were our sons and our daughters given to another people? At what point in history were our children forcibly taken from us, shackled, put into cages, sent and shipped off, and given to another group of people? When did that happen, Sister Keisha? Years ago. Years ago. Now, come on, come on, more specific than that. Back in slavery times. Back in slavery times, right? Is that not what this is right here? Now look, this is an auction block. This is used, Sister Keisha. Look, she got the child, she got this daughter, that daughter, right? Those are your daughters? Yeah. Okay, they're being auctioned away here, sold at a slave auction. You see these slave masters, read that again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Read that again. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So our sons and daughters were taken from, but sister, this is your history. You said that this happened when? But this is the Bible, though. So the Bible prophesied the slavery of the blacks and Hispanics. That's something you want to walk away from? That sounds like some pertinent but information. Some, it is great information, but we're meeting someone here. You have 4th of July? But I'm meeting some, yeah, I know, yeah. That makes sense? Let I, me ask you something, I right? actually come to eat. <laughs> so so before, you, before you do that, right? Yeah. So the children, you're yourself. Brother Mark here. We broke the commandments, and therefore, that is the condition that was put upon us by God, right? Yeah. Now, read verse 47. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. We were promised to get all things in abundance, a land of milk and honey, even we were given. We were promised to be put above all nations on high with authority to rule the earth as we should be, right? But because we broke the commandments, Verse 48, therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and the want of all things. So in 1776, July 4th, we were still in the midst of serving, even as we are today, our enemies for food, clothing, water, shelter, and all things. Look, here in the Bible, we see that God prophesied and warned us, if you break my commandments, I will send the people against you who you will be set in servitude to, for all the things that you wish for. And even in 1776, we continued to do so as they were busting fireworks from their independence from the British. We celebrate it today, but does that make sense? So, but how, why did God do that to us though? To warn us. Huh? To warn us. No, but what, what, would, what did we receive the punishment because we did? What did we do to receive the punishment? Mm -hmm. Verse 15. Verse 15, but it shall come to pass, and thou would not hearken. Well, listen to this. You need to know it, because look, if we receive this because God got mad at us, wouldn't it make sense to figure out how we should get out of that? That don't sound like something you should walk away from, does it, Brother Mark? Give, give me a synopsis of what you guys are all about. This, in, 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 uh, First Kings. Uh, give me a synopsis of what, 
what you guys are all about. Why, why should I believe in, in what you guys are preaching? Okay, That's give me First I'm Kings saying. 8. Excuse me. This is a, let me give you a synopsis, right? Yeah. Some, first Kings some, 8. Some, some quick. The book of First Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. If they sin against thee, if, if the Israelites sin against you, God, for there is no man that sinneth not. Uh -huh. And if thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy. Were, were our people carried to the land of our enemies because God got mad at us? We read that, right? And we saw that in history. Right, right. Read. Far or near, verse 47, yet, and they shall be beat themselves. Yet, if those children of Israel remember who they are, in the land whither they were carried captive, in the land that they were carried captive to, brother Mark, and repent, and repent, right? That man that's on that crucifix, right? The brother got a cross around his neck. That's what we deal with. We're dealing with the Bible, right? However, we're dealing with the correct understanding of it. God is writing to his people that were taken into captivity to their enemies in the land of their enemies. Therefore, he said there, if you repent there and remember who you are as a people, not calling themselves by the name of the captivity, African-American. God didn't say I'm going to send the African. He said the children of Israel, right? So this is the synopsis. Read. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, uh -huh. saying, we have sinned. Saying, so we have to acknowledge our sins. Okay. We have to acknowledge our sins, right? Read. And have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive. And pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto thy fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. So we are the children of Israel. Therefore, what? We have to remember that we are the children of Israel. Okay. That's why we're here. That's why we read Deuteronomy. Okay. Then what? We have to get the commandments into our system to do them. Okay. The system, we didn't even get to the commandments yet. I was about to address some things. <laughs> For instance, what is today? Today, to this place, is the day of independence of the people who hold the, the tight fist around it, right? Not the captives of it, but the people who are over it who have authority over this land, they celebrated an independence to Britain, right? When they incepted that idea, where were we? Where were we? We were in slavery. We, we were uh, being indoctrinated by, by uh, white folks at the time. Is that, what you, is that your answer to your question? Where were we? Yes, because in 1776, we were picking cotton. Right, right, right. right. We were picking indigo. We were being whipped. We were hung on trees. Right. Uh, up in until the, the 1900s, even today, where you had Brother uh, Rashid Carter, who was decapitated. Rashid, right? Decapitated, spine torn out of his body, hunted, caught on hunting cameras that are used for, for game, right? So look, when we read this Bible, what our people don't understand, and give me uh, Lamentations chapter 4, you already had it? Read that. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 17. Uh -huh. As for us, our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. And our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. We watch for a nation that did the same perpetrating of the oppression that we suffer to alleviate that oppression off of us. Why would a tiger give you back the children that it ate? Your children that it had eaten. Read that again. Verse 17, as for us, sister, y'all familiar with the book of Lamentations? I'm talking to y'all. talking to y'all too. No? Any respect for the black man, the Israelite man on the earth? If, if uh, I ask a Christian, yes. if I ask a person a Baptist of the Baptist faith uh -huh. to give me in one sentence, um, I call myself a Baptist, uh -huh. um, a summation of what they're all about, uh -huh. They would say Jesus Christ. They would say two words, Jesus Christ. Okay. And you say it everything, but you, I asked you to give me a synopsis, but you're not saying, give me some reason, some reason to. Give me Matthew chapter 15, me verse some, 24. Give me, give me some reason to, to pull me in, to pull me in. You're not giving me the reason to pull me in. This, I, well, know, I know Jesus. You know, I know Jesus? I know what he did. Do you? And, and, and well, I know what the Bible says yeah. he did. Okay, let's get so, that. I, and, and, and so uh, a Baptist would say, Jesus Christ, and if you know what he did, 
That's why I'm a Baptist. That's why I'm a Christian. Let's talk that's about what I'm Jesus a, did then. That's, that's why I'm a Methodist. Yes. I'm asking you to give me. I'm sorry. Because look, turn around on the back. O'Shea, O'Shea, show them the back of your shirt there. What does that say? Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Hear the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 